There isn't a shortage of tutorials explaining the JavaScript event loop, but quite a few of those tutorials overcomplicate the concept. Well, let me assure you that the JavaScript event loop is a very simple concept to understand. And in fact, you see this pattern occur in real life so many times. This video will teach you everything you need to know about the JavaScript event loop. The event loop is really not as complicated as many people make it sound. Let's take it step by step. We know that JavaScript is a combination of synchronous and asynchronous events. Synchronous being one after another, asynchronous is things like callbacks or promises. Let's start with just the synchronous part. I'll explain to you what an event queue is with synchronous events. And once you get that, you will easily grasp the async events as well. JavaScript is primarily single threaded. It means that there's always only one thread that does all of the work that needs to happen in a JavaScript runtime. Yeah, I know, I know there are a bunch of exceptions to that like worker threads and native stuff, but its application execution is just one thread, okay? So if you load a page in a browser and that page executes a few JavaScript functions, there is one JavaScript thread that's executing it all. That's a difficult job for that poor thread, isn't it? Take the example of a restaurant with uh, just one waiter. I mean, imagine the life of that poor guy. There are a few guests in the restaurant sitting at various different tables, and this poor waiter has to provide service for them all. Now, how does he do it? If the events are spaced out, he has no problem. Let's say the first guest asks for his attention. He goes to her table and answers her question. And after he's done, the second guest raises their hand and he goes to that table. No problem, right? Now, what if it's a crowded restaurant? The first guest raises her hand, he goes to her table, and while he's answering the question, the second guest raises his hand. What does the waiter do? He doesn't immediately stop, of course. He makes a mental note to go to that table after he's done with this table. Another guest calls him, he adds that to his mental note. And then, once he's done with a certain activity, he goes through the list of things he needs to do in his mind, and he does them in order, first come, first serve basis. This is it, this is really what the event loop is. Since JavaScript is single-threaded, there is one thread that executes everything that's on this page. Now, let's say the user clicks a button that runs code that, uh, I don't know, calculates the thousandth prime number. The user clicks on it, and the thread is off doing its thing. But then the user immediately clicks another button. Now, what does the thread do? Does it drop what it's doing? No, it makes a mental note that it needs to execute that event. Another event happens, it makes a note of that too. And once it's finished this long running task, it picks the next thing it had to do. The thing that it's using to make note of the events that are happening when it's busy, this thing is called an event queue. It's a queue of events, so what else are you gonna name it? It's first in, first out ordering of events. It's an event queue. Now, whenever the single execution thread is done executing whatever it was doing, it goes through this queue of events and executes them until the queue is empty. You can think of the logic as something like this pseudocode shows. While the event queue is not empty, pull out the first item from the event queue and then execute it. This is a loop that looks at all available events and executes them till there isn't anything left. Yup, you guessed it, this is the event loop. So basically the event queue is like a to-do list for the thread and the event loop is the thread continuously checking this to-do list and doing those things until there isn't anything left. If the queue is empty, it goes to sleep. But once an event gets into that queue, it wakes up and does this thing all over again and again and again. Now let's examine this particular executed step. When the thread picks up a function to execute, it can be either a simple one-step function or it can be a complicated one that calls some other functions. Now, if there are multiple functions, what happens is dependent on whether those are synchronous or asynchronous functions. Take the waiter example. The waiter picks up an event from the queue and it goes to the table. Now, the person at the table starts giving him an order, but then midway, she checks with her companion at the table to ask what he wants. Now, the waiter is not gonna say, I don't have time for that, I'm gonna head out. No, the waiter has to wait until the customer completes giving the order. This is blocking, this is synchronous. The waiter waits until the last question is answered and the order is fully given before moving on to the next thing. 
Similarly, when a single thread picks up an event, and that event happens to be a function that calls another function which calls another function, well, the single thread has no choice but to follow that stack of function calls until the first function has completed executing. This kind of nested function calls is usually managed by most runtimes using a stack data structure. JavaScript does that too. It uses something called a call stack to do it. So here's a slight change to that simplified pseudocode. While the queue is not empty, it pulls out the first item, but then it follows the execution logic until the call stack is empty. All right, so this is how synchronous events work. Now, how about asynchronous events? Let's take that single waiter restaurant analogy again. I don't know why people would go to that restaurant, but turns out they do and they order food. The waiter takes the order and hands it to the chef. Now, does he wait until the chef prepares the food? No, he doesn't. The waiter handing the order of the food is an asynchronous event. He hands over the order and says, I'm gonna go do other things. Call me back when the dish is done. And then he goes to the next thing that he needs to do in his event queue. Now imagine he's talking to someone at table one, someone at table two raises her hand, and then a little while later, the order for table three is prepared by the chef and it's ready. Now, what does the waiter do? Remember, he's operating strictly in a first in, first out manner. So he adds to the event queue, the table two's request, and then the fact that he has to serve table three's food. That's basically how event queue works for async. When an async call happens, there's often a callback associated with it. When that async call completes, the callback isn't immediately executed. It is put to the back of the event queue. Consider this example. First, the waiter takes the order from table one synchronously. He hands the order to the chef with a callback to say, hey, when the chef has finished the order, this dish needs to be served to that table. So the waiter doesn't hang around. He moves to take order for the next table, which is table two. When he's in the middle of taking that order, let's say the chef finishes order one. Now the callback doesn't get executed immediately. No, nope. it goes to the end of the event queue so that the waiter can get to it once he's done with the current work first. So you can see how simple event loop and the event queue concepts are. This also explains a lot of the JavaScript behavior you see in browsers, by the way. Take the instance of when you have a browser tab which is hung because some function is running slow and then you click on a button on a page two or three times, what happens? You don't get an immediate response, but then when that long running thing finishes running, all the times you clicked on that button respond together after. See, JavaScript runtime remembers because every time you click that button, the handler got added to the event queue and it all got executed by the event loop when that single thread was done doing whatever it was doing. There are a few applications and real world strategies you can implement in your code to work with this concept. Check this video out, which explains these strategies and how you can apply them to your code. In the meantime, now that you know what the event loop is, you too can make tutorials on the event loop. Yeah, I know, I said there are way too many tutorials on this topic already, but that certainly didn't stop me from making one, did it? Hmm.